welcome back to Study Club. For those of you who are new here, my name is Alicia, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some brush lettering tips for beginners. Before I get into the video, I just wanted to come on here and announce that in honor of my IB Notes and Tips website being live for an entire year, all of my notes will be 15% off for the next three days. Within this period, I will be donating 100% of the proceeds to the Australian Red Cross and New South Wales Rural Fire Services to help out with the horrible fires that are happening in Australia at the moment. It's really heartbreaking watching this all unfold in front of our eyes, so any donation would be greatly appreciated and will make such a huge impact. I will also be leaving the links to these charities in the description if you want to donate to them directly, but thank you again for all of your support and now back to the video. Just a disclaimer, sorry if I sound weird in this video. I like just got my wisdom teeth out yesterday, so I can't move my mouth too much, but... We'll get through for this video. As some of you may have seen on this channel and on my Instagram, at Study Collab, I do like to do a lot of brush lettering. I tend to use it for the headers of my notes, but other than that, I really enjoy doing it. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some things that helps me learn how to brush letter. If you are a complete beginner at brush lettering, then you can follow along in this video and hopefully it will give you some tips and methods to start brush lettering. I am by no means an expert at this, I sort of just practice, but the more you do it, obviously the better you'll get at it. You can follow along with some of these methods and hopefully it'll make that process a little bit easier. So without further ado, let's get into the video. With brush lettering nowadays, there's so many different supplies and options you can use. The one that I probably use the most often is the Tombow Dual Brush Pen. These ones I would say are a bit pricier, so I didn't get them till I was more confident with lettering. I really like these ones because they have the biggest range of colors and they're really versatile. On one end of the pen, you have the brush lettering tip. This tip is quite soft and flexible compared to some of the others, so it did take me a while to get used to it, but it is a really good quality tip. And then on the other end is the bullet tip, which you can use to do other headers or even faux calligraphy. This next one you see me use all the time, which is the Pentel Touch Brush Pen. I use this for all of my smaller headers. This pen is really great for beginners. It's what I actually use to learn. Just because the tip is a little bit smaller and less flexible, so it's easier to control. The next one is the Zig Brushable Pen. This one I would say is very similar to the Tombow Dual Brush Pen in terms of flexibility and size. The only difference with this one is the different color range and also both ends has a brush lettering tip. The last brush pen I have here is the Artline Sticks. This one is another really good one for beginners if you would like a bigger size tip. The tip here is not too flexible so it's really easy to control. I just don't use it too often because the outside can be a bit uncomfortable when you're using it for a long time. If you don't have access to a brush pen, you can also use something with a bullet tip end like the mild liner. This can be used to do faux calligraphy, which I'll show at the end of the video. So before we get into lettering, I just wanted to talk about how do you grip the pen. Using the Tombow Dual Brush Pen as an example, you'll see the way I'm actually holding the pen is exactly the same as I do any other pen. The only difference when you're brush lettering is you want to hold the tip at a 45 degree angle to the page. So you're basically slanting it and using only the side of the pen. The first thing you probably want to practice is the basic strokes. So the first one is this upward thin stroke. When you're doing this one, you want to apply a little to no pressure on the pen and just drag the tip up the page. For this next downward stroke, you want to use the side of the pen and then apply as much pressure as you can down the page. Once you've mastered those two strokes, you can try connecting them, so doing light strokes up and then pressing hard down. I would say these three are the main strokes you really want to know and master for brush lettering. They will help you form a good foundation, so what I do is I just practice using different pens and trying the same strokes over and over again until I feel comfortable with the grip and amount of pressure I'm applying. So the next step is writing out the alphabet. So when writing out each of the letters, you're really just combining the different strokes we just practiced. So for A, it's like a downstroke and then a light upstroke and then a hard downstroke again. So when you put those together, it should look something like this. Then for the B, you have a light upstroke, a hard downstroke, another light upstroke, and then a smaller downstroke to finish off the end. Thank you. 
I'll just go through one more example for the G. So you have a downstroke, a light upstroke, and then you put a lot of pressure at the end for the last downstroke. And then when you do it without lifting your pen off the page, it should look something like this. For the rest of the letters, I'm just going to fast forward me writing them out. If you want to, you can slow down the video or pause it to follow along with each letter. Now we learned all the letters. Let's go over the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not going to go through all of them. You can pause the video here if you want to go through it slowly and master each letter. What I recommend you do once you feel comfortable writing each letter is you can try and connect the strokes. So here I've written out the entire alphabet but just joined the end of each letter to the beginning of the next one. And this is just getting you used to joining letters together when you write words out. You can even try practicing writing out your name, any other random words, like I always write hello for some reason. And also the word calligraphy is a good one to practice because it's got a lot of up and down letters. The next thing is something that you can look at when you're first starting out. You really don't have to pay attention to it later on when you've sort of mastered how to letter, but that's something called varying the base height. So as you can see here, I've drawn four lines of about equal length from each other using a pencil. And I'm using that as a scaffold to know how big I should write my letters. So with the letters of the alphabet, what I basically do is I'll start all my letters from the same base height, which is on the third line. So all of the bodies of each letter, so like the A and the circle part of B should all be within the middle gap, so within the middle two lines. So obviously for letters like B and F, they're a little bit taller, so the top part of that can reach up to the top line, and then for G, the exact same, but reaching the bottom line. But what you'll notice is that when I've written them all together next to each other, all the letters reside on the same baseline. If you're just starting out and you're beginning to practice writing full words, you can draw these four lines out again as a scaffold and then just write the entire word with all the letters staying at the same base height, just to practice the variations between height and length of each of the letters. Obviously drawing out the lines with pencil each time can be a bit tedious, so when you've practiced it enough, you can repeat the same process over and over again by writing out the word without the lines this time. And finally, this is something you can try out when you are a lot more comfortable, which is varying the base height. So as you can see at the bottom one here, with the word calligraphy, all the bodies of each letter, they don't reside on the same level. So I've just done some words higher, some words lower, and this gives it a bit of personality and you can change up the style of how you letter. The final thing I'm going to touch upon in this video is how to do faux calligraphy. Faux calligraphy is basically where you don't need a brush pen, but you can get the same look out of it with a marker or a pen. Here is an example. I'm using the bullet tip of a mild liner. So to basically do faux calligraphy, you're using the exact same strokes and font that you would when you normally brush letter, except normally when you brush letter, you apply a lot of pressure on the down strokes. When you're doing faux calligraphy, you don't want to do this. So once you've outlined the letters, instead of applying a lot of pressure on the down strokes, you want to draw a line relatively close to the downstroke and then just fill it in. So it is a bit of a two-step process, but that's how you can get the same effect without having a brush pen. So as you can see in this last example here, I'm writing out the word calligraphy, but I'm just writing the cursive outline of it. And then I go back in again with the same pen and where the downstrokes would normally be, I'm drawing a thicker line next to it. And once you've colored in the gaps, it basically looks exactly the same as you would write it with a brush pen. And that is about it for this video. Those are all my brush lettering tips and methods to help you start to brush letter and do some calligraphy. I hope you found this video useful and are able to implement some of these skills into your own notes or your own hobbies, whatever you want to use brush lettering for. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because it really supports my channel. And also be sure to subscribe down below if you want to see more videos like this. And also turn on the notification bell to be notified when I post next. And with that being said, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!